Okay, John. So if we could just start with, you know, you coming here to the City Open in, in Washington. You've got a lot of history with this tournament. Mm -hmm. Three times a, a finalist. Um, must be feeling confident of coming back to a place you know so well. Yeah, certainly. Uh, I have a lot of very good memories from this tournament here in Washington. Uh, my first, my second ever ATP tournament in 2007. I was fresh out of college. I made the finals of this event, which was crazy and completely out of nowhere. And it got my career started off on a, on a very good foot. And since then, I've always come back here. and I've um, always played well. Haven't quite taken it, you know, all home here, but I've made the finals three times. And of course, I'm always up against very tough competition, but I've always played very well here. And I'm looking forward to playing well here again this year. And you arrive here off another title in Atlanta, your, your fifth. That mm -hmm. must be oozing with confidence and just feeling so good about your game. Yeah, no, certainly. I mean, like, I had a tough loss at Wimbledon in the semifinals that we all know about. Very long match, and I was so close to making the finals of that tournament, which would have been amazing. But I think I did a good job of you know, hitting the delete button on that, resetting physically, and more importantly, mentally, and got myself ready for Atlanta. I was able to win that again. So um, this is my favorite time of the year on a surface that I really enjoy, and I've started, uh, started my summer season off on a, on a good note. I read an article with you where you said at the age of 33, you feel you're playing the best tennis of your career. Mm -hmm. um, what do you put that down to? Yeah, I really do feel like I'm playing the best at, at 33. And to me, it, it's really not that surprising. I think it, it, it does make sense because as you know, advancements in training and diet and the more we know about how to take care of ourselves as that evolves and you know, I've been able to, to, to do that very well, um, take care of my body, eat the right way and I think, you know, from my 11 years on tour I've gained a lot of maturity and, uh, you know, I've, I think I'm a lot wiser as well. So you bundle all that up and it's been a good recipe for me here in 2018 at, at 33 years old. Now you're seated two for the event, uh, top ranked American, and the, and the crowds always get fully behind you here. Yeah. Is that an extra inspiration for you, kind of waving the flag, if you like, for here in the capital in DC? Yeah, well look, this, this is a, our nation's capital, and being the number one American, I do take a lot of pride in that. It's a spot that I'm pretty accustomed to. I think this is six of seven years or something I've, I've been the number one American, and so it's a spot that I want to retain as long as I possibly can. As I said, I take a lot of pride in that and being here in this historic city in front of these great fans that I've always played well in front of. Um, you know, this is, you know, I want to do that, do that again in, to, in 2018 for them. The City Open celebrates its 50th anniversary mm -hmm. this year. You've been here many a time, seen the tournament grow. Can you just tell us a little bit about how important it is to be part of these celebrations this year? Yeah, well, it's very important. I think to celebrate its 50th year here is quite an achievement. It's an unbelievable milestone. I think it speaks to the this tennis community, the support that this tournament gets from their fans, and of course the sponsors like City. Look, it, it's absolutely amazing to uh, to be a part of this 50th tournament here, and I've played in a bunch of these since since 2007. So I feel like I have a small part in this tournament's a very very rich history. It's always been a staple on tour. It's always been a staple here in the city during the summer. It's in a beautiful location, very historic, you know, old school location. It's got a very unique feel to it and a very special feel. And it uh, has that again this year. And this year we've also got a new trophy to mark the, the 50th anniversary. And, and every tournament has a kind of unique charm and you touched on a little bit mm -hmm. there. But what does make this one so special? Well, for me, I, I think it's... The, the, it's the city. I mean, Washington, D.C. speaks for itself. It's so historic. It's it's so beautiful. I think the foreigners that come here love coming to this city. I think the architecture in D.C. is most similar to anywhere in Europe. So this is, it's my favorite big city in, in, in the country. I think it's just, it's beautiful. It's so, so nice to walk around. And when players do get a chance to walk around and see all the sights, there's so much to see here. You could be here for months on end, checking everything out. So um, it's one of the coolest places we have in America. Cool, just lost a couple of questions. Um, there's a shot clock in place this year uh, as part of the lead up to the US Open, also a shorter warm up, um, something that was trialed in, yeah. in Milan in the next gen mm -hmm. uh, series. Um, what do you think about these rules? Yeah, I think it's, look, I think it's a, a good thing. Um, we'll see, I've never played with the shot clock 
on before. I've been known to be a little bit slow. I'm a big guy. Look, I got to take my time. But look, this as the world evolves and as our, our spectators evolve, our game needs to evolve as well. So um, the shorter warm-up time, I think, is, is very cool. You need to keep the fans engaged. And something like a shot clock, that can keep them engaged as well. So I don't know if there's been any violations yet. You see it in basketball all the time, shot clock violation. It'd be very cool to, you know, the first shot clock, serve clock violation happen in tennis. It's going to happen eventually. Yeah, I guess so. Maybe it's a record you don't want to have. No, so. yeah, but it'll, look, I might just test it out just to see what it sounds like. Okay, and last question. I wonder if you could just say a few words about Sasha Zverev, yeah. um, someone you've known, I think, yeah. I believe, from a young age, yeah. and his development in it, such a short space of time and mm -hmm. you know, what he's doing for the game right now. Yeah, I've actually known Sasha for a long time, so probably since he was about 15 years old, maybe even before then. And to me, it's actually not that surprising. You know, he's a guy that's always been loaded with talent. He's blessed with an incredible gift to play this game so well. And he's certainly not letting that go to waste because I see how hard he works, what he does on the court, off the court, being a big kid, taking care of himself. He's doing all the right things. And as I said, he's got so much talent. So he's got a lot going for him. He's, a, I think he's third in the world at 21 years old. It's, it's incredible. Um, in my opinion, and he's heard this a lot. I'm not trying to put any extra pressure on him. He's the next big thing in, in this game. And I think he welcomes that as well. I think all great champions do on top of that. So he's had unbelievable results the last few years and you can't get to three in the world with, without having um, done some very good things uh, in this sport. So he's only going to continue to get better. So he's a very um, good guy that uh, the tennis is lucky, I think, to have him leading the, the next gen. Well, he's, he's in the opposite, opposite half of the draw, so it'd be a nice final if that were to come to pass. Yeah, if I were to play him in the final, that'd be amazing. I, you know, if we played each other in the Miami final and I finally, finally was able to uh, beat him there. I think I'm one and four against him. But I have that one, and uh, I'm sure we will play again sometime soon. It's always a pleasure playing against him, and of course it's always so tough.